Hello everyone and welcome to another painting video. Today we're going to be checking out a little barbarian for Frostgrave. Now this model is definitely outside my usual realm of what John paints. It's usually tanks and stuff with lots of armor and big metal slabs and brr, big heavy stuff. And a lot of a lot of the times I look at stuff that's a bit more looks a bit more ancient esque. So in particularly these barbarians kind of Viking, Viking-esque sort of vibe to them and it's not really something I sit down and think I'm definitely going to paint one of these today, I will really want to paint that. Uh, so I've had to sit down and really consider it and go, okay, John, you know nothing about this, so go ahead and give it a shot. And that's what I've done. And initially I wasn't very confident with it at all. I think that probably comes across in at least half of the video, uh, there's just not a lot of confidence there. Which is fine, absolutely fine. I don't mind showing my lack of confidence on video, totally cool. And as I, as I got through it, I realised, well, you know what, it doesn't really matter so much if I'm confident or not, let's paint it to a level that I would be happy to put it on the table, and uh, let's just see what the rest of what you guys think, which is kind of what I've been trying to make these three colours up videos all about. So paint to when you're happy with it, paint to when you believe it's finished or you consider it finished and then that's it. Don't worry about needing to copy your favourite YouTuber or copy all that sort of stuff or be as good as those other excellent, truly excellent painters that are online. And just remember if you want to learn those techniques, you can learn those techniques, but if you don't want to, you don't have to. So we always try to do something simple and achievable. That's my goals for all these three colours up. Enough of the preaching, let's get on to the painting. So here I have the Barbarian. He has been primed with an airbrush, he's been primed with the Steinal Res black and white. Uh, he's been xenothilled in the white using the airbrush, so we have a bit of shading and stuff that we can play with if... Um, if I get my paint consistency right. So <laughs> the first thing I'm going to do is paint this cape that he has on here, which has this hood that's folded back and runs down his back and so on. I'm going to paint that and I'm going to do it in a nice uh, chocolate brown, which is Vallejo paint. And I'm going to make sure that I have it fairly thinned down uh, because I really want to try and retain some of the shading that I've put on with the airbrush. I don't want to completely ruin that. So we'll see. <laughs> it's not often I actually try to, you know, I really try with my paints, so I think it's about time I, I started to step up a little bit. So we'll do a, probably a couple of coats of this. Just to see if we can get that shading to retain itself in there. I'm also doing this first because I don't want to have to start painting these areas and then realize that, you know, I've put paint everywhere or, you know, when I go to paint this, I'm getting in there with the brush and it's accidentally starting to coat his legs and stuff there, so. With two coats of the chocolate brown down, it's time to move on and do a little bit of the skin. So I've decided that doing the lower details first is going to help me speed the process up later on. So the skin tone I'm going for is Vallejo Extra Opaque Heavy Skin Tone, applying it in the same way that we've done the uh, chocolate brown as well. So just watering it down a little bit onto my brush and giving the model a couple of coats because he has bare arms and stuff and I want to make sure that they're all done uh, before I move on to the other cloth, because again, I don't want to mess things up as I go along. So this is all pretty straightforward. We'll just get this down. And it's a lovely skin tone as well. Next up, after the skin tone's down, we're going to be taking some Vallejo Panzer Aces Weathered Wood, and we're going to be doing a bit more uh, of his clothing. So we're probably going to do his trousers. I'll do them in this lighter colour. And I'd say we'll probably pick a different colour for his tunic. Um, but we might also do this sort of 
this piece here, which isn't part of his cape, but isn't necessarily part of his trousers either, so we'll probably just do that in the same in the same material color. Next stage we're going to move on to the boots, and for the boots we're going to be using Morn Fang Brown, the Citadel colour. Again, watered down a little bit, and we'll probably give it a couple of layers. With the boots done, we're going to move on to the sort of fur that he has around his belt here, and I'm going to paint that like a sheepskin. So for the base, I'm going to be using Morgast Bone, and this should just give me a nice base tone to work with uh, when it comes to shading and highlighting it later. Not worried about the other details that are on it at the minute, we'll paint those afterwards. Same with his belt. He also has a couple of pieces around his wrist, and there's a little piece up here just below his cape. So with the sheepskin dry, we're going to be moving on to his tunic, and for his tunic we're going to be doing some Army Painter Chaotic Red. And again, just as before, thin it down a little bit, and we'll give his tunic a couple of coats of this Chaotic Red. Making sure that we're neat across anywhere we've already put some paint down. With the Chaotic Red now down and dry, we're going to move on to some Rhinox Hide, and for this we're going to be putting it onto the likes of our leather strapping, so around here on his forearm, and on his belt here, he also has some straps on his boots we're going to put down there, and the handle on the sword as well, so just basically a case of what I'm thinking actually, is if I make most of this leather and make this bit as a leather, as a metal plate, it might look a bit more visually interesting. So let's let's go and let's try it. Let's see what happens. And you can see as we get further on in this painting, we have to be a little more neat each time because we have different colours that are getting close to each other now and we've got to be a bit more careful than applying a new colour. With the Rhinox hide now down, I can show you what we've been doing. So there's little straps on his boots. I've also uh, coloured in or hit the little leather strapping on this piece of cloth. I also gave the back of the shield a little layer of it because it looks kind of nice and it, it serves well for the next couple of steps. And obviously the wrist. And we've done the horns on the helmet as well because obviously they're going to be going more of a bone colour later on. Now. The last stage in this round of um, base coating is the shield, and for this, the other half of the shield is going to be blue, so we're going to use some contrast uh, Talisar blue just to lightly colour this in, and uh, that will have it ready for shading and for doing some uh, like faded or chipped paint effects that we're going to do later on. So pretty straightforward. At this stage I'm going to let it dry, uh, at least the Talisar balloon needs to dry, however the, at this point the whole model, apart from the stuff that's already been um, painted in, is going to get a shade. Um, I'm going to go with an Agrax Earth shade. Now I haven't painted in the beard, we're going to get to that later I think, We're going to. I'm not quite sure what colour I want to do it yet. but. In the meantime, the rest of the model is going to get an Agrax or a shade. So I'm going to start on it uh, and then finish it off camera after the Talisar blue is dried and I can get the whole shield put in as well. So let's have a go, let's get a start then. I'm going to be fairly liberal with it, but make sure it doesn't pull anywhere too heavily. With the Agrax Earth Shade now dry, I'm quickly going to do a little bit on the shield before moving on, and we're going to be using a bit of weathered wood again, but we're going to be dry brushing the front face of the shield with the weathered wood, just to sort of wear in 
this sort of paint color that or paint scheme that we have going on on the shield to make it look like it's maybe taken a few knocks over a bit of time. So we're just going to quickly dry brush it. And we're doing that now because we don't want to be doing it after I've put down uh, the metal banding and stuff on the shield. We want to have that already sorted and done by then. So just a very light dry brush of it. Just to make it look like, you know, maybe it's not been painted the best or, you know, it's been done in a hurry and it's just a very thin coat of colour they've put down on it and it's worn over time. Something like that. So, from this point, we're going to just continue uh, with the base colouring. And I think for the next colour, I'm going to be using a bit of uh, lead belcher here. And that's going to be for the helmet and for the sword and for uh, any other metallic pieces. So, we're going to be doing a light or a bit of a, a basic sort of coating of this. Let's see if I can thin it down a little bit too. So we'll start on the sword. With the lead belcher now down, we're going to move on to a bit of the, the brass and, and bronze gold detailing. And um, for this I'm going to be using uh, MIG metal. Uh, which is old brass, great colour, and we're going to be applying that uh, to anywhere we really feel like we should have some brass. So we're going to be adding it to the buckles on his belt, on the straps on his feet, on the belt on his waist, obviously the pommel and the cross guard of the sword, and also we're going to take in the details, the eyebrow details, and this sort of little crest detail here, we're going to be taking that in as well. So let's have a look at the boots first. Just a couple of little pieces there. I think there's one. Is there one on the other side that's visible? Hard to tell. I'm getting a bit closer in a minute and have a look. And pommel of the sword. So with all the metallics down, uh, our golds in particular, you can see that uh, sort of eyebrow shape on the helmet and the bit of the crest, uh, as well as the brass studs that I've put onto his bracer and on his sword. So from there, we're going to be shading our metallics down. And for that, we're going to be using a bit of null oil. So we'll just be taking that and just adding this in as a bit of a shade when my background doesn't fall over. <laughs> oh, it's like I don't know what I'm doing. Oh wait, I don't. Uh, right. Anyway, let's uh, start on the helmet. I'm getting back into focus. And I'm not going to go too heavy with the shading. Just enough to dull the metal down a little bit and have it ready for highlighting and to redefine the segments in the eyebrow and on the crest. So our next step now is to work on the horns a little bit. And for the horns we're going back to Morgast Bone. So we already have the um, the base colour down which was the Rhinox Hide. So we're going to try and leave a little bit of that towards the base of the horn and then we'll base coat the rest of it using Morgast Bone. So let's see if we can do this in a sort of a tidy-ish way. Okay, so we are getting there. <clears throat> we're, we're almost we're almost on the, the home straight now, guys. So, so we're going to move on to highlighting. And we're going to start with our metals. So for the metals, I'm going to be using a bit of dry Necron compound. And to make the metal look a bit more interesting, I'm going to try something, and I don't know if it's going to work, but I'm going to try it. So to try and make the metal look beaten and worn, instead of just dry brushing this on, I'm going to try and stipple it. So I'm going to take this brush and we're going to stipple it onto the upper surfaces of the metals.
and this is just to try and get a bit of texture built up on that part of the shield. So that doesn't look too bad. Then on the edges, I'm just going to dab my brush along the edge to give it the highlight, but make it, <clears throat> pardon me, make it a bit of an uneven highlight. So that there is a bit of a glint on the metal, but that it constantly looks like it's a piece of battered metal rather than a piece of new steel. I think that looks okay. So we're going to do the same on the helmet. Let's get to an area of the helmet we want to try on. Okay, so I don't think that looks too bad at all. So onto the sword. <clears throat> well, the sword's going to take just a straight up dry brush, I think, but we're going to try and make that as smooth a highlight as possible here. And only focusing on the upper side of the blade, where the light is going to be hitting it more often. And then on the reverse side, just do a little bit, focusing far more on the cutting edge of the blade and letting it blend over a little bit towards the tip of the sword. So we're going to move on to the um, sheepskin. And for the sheepskin, I'm going to be using uh, Ushapti bone as the highlight. Again, we'll be putting a layer of this onto the horns as well. So let's make sure I have my brush ready and I have some paint with a little bit of water mixed into it just to improve the flow a touch. So we'll start with the horns, because the horns should be dry by now. And all I'm going to do is run this colour up from the end to about a third of the way or half the way up the horn. Now I'll be the first to admit that this isn't something I've done really at all, so this is as much practice for me as it is trying to show something for you guys. So that should be okay. We'll do a little bit of a CPO wash on that and that should tidy it up. So onto the sheepskin. Take some more paint off my brush and I'm just going to lightly brush stroke over it. So, so far so good. I'm, I'm happy enough. Now, if I can remember what color I did the trousers. I think they were, um, I think they were weathered wood. So we're going to give them a bit of a highlight with some weathered wood again. And all this is going to do is just pick out some creases on the material just to give a little bit of a highlight to them. So we just look at areas that are high points on the cloth. There. So, let's pick another colour here real quick. And um, we'll go with the boots, which were based in Mornfang Brown. So I'm going to move up to uh, Steel Legion Drab to highlight them. And again, just pick out some high spots. Like that. And what I'm also going to do is use the same color to 
to get a little bit of highlighting onto his cape. So we're going to be switching to probably using the side of the brush here. Make sure there's some enough paint off the brush. All right, that'll do for that. And we're going to move on to the tunic next. And the tunic, I think, because we did a chaotic red as the base, so I'm going to take a Vallejo color, Cavalry Brown, which is basically a very red brown, but I believe that it's a, maybe a step up or two or a tone up or two from the uh, chaotic red. So again, we're just going to pick out some high spots, take some of the paint off my brush. I'm trying to also keep in mind that this is essentially a, a basic infantry figure. I don't, we don't necessarily, if you're only painting for the tabletop, need to be going to some extreme lengths uh, to get the result you want. No, I also think it's about time that I actually painted his beard. So <laughs> let's um let's make let's give him a ginger beard. So if we're gonna go ginger, we'll start again with more fine brown. And we'll just quickly base coat his beard up. This also lets us tidy up the mess we made of the skin around his lip. With the beard based, we're going to give it a little wash with some seraphim sepia, which will also be put onto the horns. So just a very thin-ish coat. Okay, so not too bad. Now, while we're waiting for that to dry, we're going to move on and highlight his skin tone. So I'm trying to pick out a skin tone I have sitting around here somewhere that will hopefully be the right shade. I think I'm going to go with uh, some Vallejo uh, sunny skin, sunny skin tone. He's a barbarian. He's bound to be out and about quite a bit. You know, he's quite social. Likes bringing um, likes to learn about other people's cultures up close, I guess. So, so all I'm going to try and do here is just highlight up some of his muscle tone. By just giving it a little touch of this flash tone. No, I probably will. Do a little more inside the helmet, maybe. I'm not too sure. I think it's better just looking like it's retaining its shade. <clears throat> but getting the arms is definitely quite important. And I don't think they look too bad. So, yeah, that'll do. We'll move on now, because that um, wash has probably dried. And we're going to finish off the beard with a little bit of a highlight. So for the highlight, I'm going with... Vallejo game color, which is Parasite Brown, and it'll give us that sort of gingerish tone that I'm hoping to get. Quite an orangey brown, which is quite nice for adding a, a ginger look to something. And what I'm going to try and do is use my smaller brush and use the side of that smaller brush. If I could stop hitting the camera for one second and just let's see if I can get a bit more of the brush do little passes, little horizontal passes just 
just like that. And I think that's brightened that beard up quite nicely. So yeah, that will do. Nice and simple. I'm trying to keep it simple. I know a lot of people would go into all sorts of blending and stuff, but... Uh, it's just... Not for me. I, I like to keep things simple. I, I always... I always, always preach that, you know. You know, there's way, ways and means of doing simple and effective stuff, so... That's kind of the, the, the place I want to paint in. And I know there's other guys out there. I know there's guys like Miniac and stuff who are absolutely astounding. And they do fantastic work. And they make things look simple, and I'm like, yeah. I wish I could be that good. <laughs> so... I totally moved on to the next step without telling you what I'm actually doing. I'm going to be highlighting his brass now. If I stop hitting the camera every two minutes, I'm going to be using my MIG uh, metallic, my MIG brass, my bright brass or whatever it's called. I cannot remember what it's called since there is no longer a name on the bottle, which is always handy. So it is highlighted. I can tell you that much. It is highlighted. <laughs> I think as well, to be honest, do I have any flash washes in here? Flash tone washes? I'm not sure I do. So we're going to return to our sepia. If I find it again. So we're going to go back to Seraphim sepia now. And I'm just going to add a little light coat of it in and around his, his eyes. and such just to just to get that tone just to get the shading in there I'd rather the the facial details were were a bit darker and a bit more in shade than they are currently so the next step now that the wash is into his face we're going to take a little bit of praxetti white and we're just going to tidy up or highlight up the um the sheep skin on his trousers. Now maybe this brush is a bit too big. Yeah, this brush is too big. Don't be an idiot. So let's um let's go with something we can get a bit more close with. So a smaller brush here. Hang on. I thought I could be tactful with my other brush, but I clearly can't. So we'll just take this smaller brush here and just Take the Prixetti white across the sheepskin details. And what this is doing is really starting to brighten that up a little bit and make it look a bit more like what it should look like. So there's a couple of um, items on the string that's hanging down over that sheepskin and I'm just trying to figure out what to do with those. I'm probably, to be honest with you, just going to paint them in a little bit of Ushapti bone so that's just to get something down on them. So let's get a bit of our Ushapti bone there because there's what looks like to be a couple of teeth. In there. And there, and then there's a little extra thing I'm going to call a bone fragment sitting in there. So, yeah, it's okay. It's definitely not the best, though. But I'm still very happy with how that shield's turned out. That, the stippling, that, the, the dry down on the metal has worked quite a treat, so I'm happy with that. It's more of the, the main detail really is what metal details there are on the miniature that are really making him stand out at the minute. So so with that said and done, I'm fairly confident that I'm going to call this miniature finished. So what I'm going to do is give him an airbrush coat of some matte varnish, put a bit of basing material down, and then we'll get to see the model in its sort of in its final form. And here we have our finished barbarian. And he's looking all right. Once you put the matte varnish down, he's looking pretty smart. I have to like that. 
I'm pretty happy with how that cloak turned out. I think that's probably my favourite feature of it, uh, as well as probably the metallic detail on the helmet and the, the shield as well. I like the way that stippling the dry paint onto the front of it has made it look a bit more battered rather than just polished. So that's quite an interesting texture to put on there. So that brings us to the end of it. Uh, I will admit I was definitely not confident going into this one. Um, it's just not a, it's not something I paint very much, uh, is that more sort of history slash fantasy-esque kind of thing, and the miniatures to me don't really jump out at me, and I, I don't get a lot of ideas, uh, when I'm painting them, which you probably have picked out with the amount of tones of brown I ended up using on this one, um, but in the end, I think we've got a nice little... A nice little barbarian and if you had a full unit of these running around i think it would all look pretty good i'd, I'd be i'd be happy to feel that and don't forget guys this is what these three colors up are all about is is getting something that you're happy with down on the table don't worry about all your 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 high-end sort of painting paint it to when you to where you're happy but i do hope you've enjoyed this one overall and i want to just keep pushing across that message you know a model's only finished when you think it's finished or you believe it's finished you know don't worry about what anyone else has so thank you so much for watching i hope you're staying safe out there take care and i will see you again very soon